Today, we continue our 2022 year end list in the world of Canadian MMA as we are looking at the best rookies of the year. So to be in consideration for this list, you had to make your pro debut during the year 2022 as, of course, a Canadian mixed martial artist. The other thing that I will say is that there were lots of great candidates for that list. Not everybody was able to make it. I still tried to put more honorable mentions than usual as I still wanted to highlight some prospects. And, and of course, the number of fights during the year surely helps. But a guy could have fought three or four times and won all of these fights and still rank lower than a guy who fought once or twice but, but really showed that he was a natural and it was a top level prospect so the number of fights help but will not make or break a ranking for a fighter in this list so let's go with the honorable mentions we've got blake oswald steven sampaio usman katak mohamed ado ryan yapsan Jared Dumont, Shannon Clark, Matt Smith, John Moore, and Alana Cook. At number 10, we've got Amro Al Palestini. The Jocelyn's MMA prospect really showed one of the most complete pro debuts in a while as clearly he was a very comfortable striker and shown it in his fight against Mauricio Cruz but was also able to get some really good takedowns and have some great moments on the ground. It's rare that you see a guy come in as complete as he was for his pro debut but also as calm and collected as he was. The guy really looked like a veteran, really looked like a guy who did this plenty time before but it was only his first pro fight and I really had no choice but to put him on that list so he's at number 10. At number 9 we've got Navid Zangane who is a highly touted Iranian wrestler who made his pro debut straight into a title fight for BFL which he won in dominant fashion to just prove the hype that was behind him. Uh, the guy is, looks like he's legit, he looks like he's the kind of prospect that could be on the fast track to the higher levels if he wanted to. He's only 26 years old too so that helps a lot. I was thoroughly impressed by his pro debut and I had to put him on the list even though he only fought one this year and at number eight it's Tao Ben Daoud which is not even fair for people here as the guy was supposed to make his pro debut way back in 2019 so he's been a pro level fighter for close to three years now and when he finally fought as a pro for the first time he really looked like a guy who had been a pro for three years the guy is spending most of his time in the US training along Amir Al-Bazi and lots of UFC fighters at the PI and the guy is just great we've been waiting for him and now he's here Tao Ben Daoud is is one I know as a pro. He would have been way higher if he had some more fights and he's number 8 on my list. At number 7, Jonathan Ramsey. At 2-0 this year, he was another highly touted prospect from the Quebec amateur scene and, and he was maybe one of the greener guys on the old list to be quite honest. The, the guy has some explosions, some athleticism in general but there was still a lot of questions to answer as he was able to basically blow through every one of his amateur opponents and he came in as a pro and did not answer any of these questions as he kept blowing through his two opponents that he fought this year so we still have to see how the guy's gonna look in a longer fight where he gets some opposition but clearly he has all the innate skills uh, to be a great mixed martial artist and he's also a personality that seems to attract people and a guy that could become a, a big star for the samurai mma promotion in the future so that's why i've got it at number seven on the list jonathan ramsey at number six we've got the lead singer of oasis liam gallagher all jokes apart the guy is a, is a guy we knew back here in Quebec as he was a champion for a Quebec amateur promotion MFL and he made the jump as a pro who began his career with a great triangle armbar win over Dylan McElvini before fighting Matt Dawson a guy who already had four pro fights compared to only one for Gallagher and he was able to really dominate and have an amazing performance in his fight moving his record to 2-0 in his first pro year and establishing himself as one of the best 135 prospects in the country let's move on with the top five at number Number five, we've got Javad Majoub, a guy who only had to fight once for me to put him on the list. And even though his fight was maybe not the best one as he crushed a poor Mexican guy on the New Era boxing card, uh, MMA fight in the ring, which I absolutely hate, but what you gonna do? Uh, Javad is like a three-time Olympian in judo. He's absolutely enormous, weighs over 250 pounds. And you know, guys with such a background will always be an enormous threat, especially at heavyweight where we need the, the, these kind of fighters. So Javan Majoub, like I said, only needed to fight once 
for me to put him on the list and he fought once he's on the list he's one of the brightest prospects that Canada has to offer and at number four we've got Tommy Morrison a guy that we have been waiting for for years on the Quebec regional scene and he was a great amateur champion for many promotions moved up to the pro level and to be honest did not have quite the year we were expecting him to have it pretty much took him one fight and a round to really get going but once he got going we saw the full extent of his potential and, and there was no doubt that we were looking at one of the brightest prospects on the Canadian MMA scene. He's a guy to watch for sure, especially at flyweight where we always need talent and he's one of them. Tommy Morrison is at number 4 on the list. At number 3, it's Medizide Van and what was basically an Iran takeover this year on the prospect list as he's the third Iranian fighter to be on the list after Navid and Javad Majoub. Medi is a highly regarded Greco-Roman wrestler who came in with like such natural attributes into the cage and first fight did very well knocked out Mauricio Cruz with an highlight real KO by slam he basically uh, defended an arm bar by picking the guy up with one arm and slapped him on his head uh, for the knockout win then went on to fight Sam Jigar and knocked him out by brutal knees against the cage got the win there came on to a third fight absolutely destroyed the Mexican guy's nuts with a brutal knee fortunately the fight got stopped and got ruled to into a no contest as the Mexican basically couldn't breathe for five minutes after getting kneed in his balls but Medzi is a monster he's a freak athlete he's a highly regarded wrestler and he has all the attributes all the tools to become a very very dangerous fighter in the future and another guy like Javad like Navid that could be fast tracked to the higher levels if he wanted to the guy is a natural but he's also very skilled and that's why I got him at number three Medzi design. At number two is Jack Bular. The guy made his pro debut this year. He's an amazing wrestler. He's with the Bular Wrestling Club. You know Arjun. You know all of them. They're absolute monsters. If Javad would have fought twice, they they probably been equal. Uh, I dream of this fight. I dream to see Jack fight face Javad. And there's another uh, Iranian wrestler in Montreal, Mustafa Salazide. Uh, I hope these guys all fight. But yeah, Jack Bular didn't fight the highest level of competition. But he's a heavyweight outside of four or five guys in the country that are active there are there is not a high level of competition available so the guy needed to start somewhere he started uh, with two wins in 2022 and he is getting the second place on my list and that's for sure because these level of wrestler these levels of athlete you won't see that every day and that's why he deserves to be that high and at number one we've got the guy who has the complete package in the sense that yes he's an amazing naturally gifted prospect yes he has an amazing amazing wrestling background yes he trains at one of the best gyms in the world in elevation fight team in Colorado but he also had three fights this year against an amazing level of opposition for LFA and he's won all three of them so that's why he's number one and I'm talking about the vanilla thunder himself Ben Tynan the guy is just great I absolutely did not know this man before this year started I once uh, saw that there was a Canadian fighting for LFA already had one pro in and I looked into it he submitted the guy with one of the weirdest submission I've ever seen my submission of the year this year uh, when he basically got an arm triangle choke but trapped the guy his arm behind his back and basically was able to, to finish a Kimura while in the arm triangle you gotta see it to believe it it's an amazing submission but the guy is a complete package like I said amazing wrestling background trains with the likes of Curtis Blaze and all these amazing fighters at the Elevation Fight Team was able to put in a lot of work this year and to put the cherry on top of the Sunday. the guy has amazing blonde hair he's super good looking he's the type of guy you want to push forward and, and I feel like if he's able to put in three more fights next year he could already be knocking at the door of the UFC so I got to give him the title of rookie of the the year because of his skill his natural talent his background his training environment but mostly because he was able to put in more work than every other top level prospect on the list so that's why he's number one the vanilla thunder ben tynan so that's how i conclude my rookie of the year list for 2022 in canadian mma please leave a like if you like please subscribe if you want to if you don't want to you're not obligated i'm not gonna pull up at your home and try to kimura you like ben tyne and if you don't but i would appreciate it for sure stay tuned for the reminder of the list there's not much left but still some left see you next time